Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. I'm with Dr. Marissa Montecalvo from the Westchester County Department of Health. And what we would like to do is take this opportunity to share with you what is essentially an outline for schools and school districts when they are designated into a yellow, orange, or red zone. There's been an awful lot of information that has been shared over the last few weeks. And for purposes of clarifying it, particularly for those who are looking to keep their schools open by utilizing the Binex Now test cards for surveillance purposes. Uh, we have a presentation and Dr. Montecalvo is going to walk you through a PowerPoint presentation and give you very specific outline and details on how uh, we can collaboratively move forward together from here. So at this point, I am going to share my screen and then hand it off to Dr. Montecalvo and Dr. Montecalvo will tell me when I need to move slides and she can also come off of mute. Thank you. Good afternoon. So I'm pleased that we have this opportunity to try to put this together for you. The purpose of this presentation is to review what can be done when responding and preparing for either a yellow, orange, or red zone designation. And of course, everything I say is accurate as of today, <laughs> and we will keep you abreast if there are any major changes. Next slide, please. So let's start with red and orange. So this has changed. So effective uh, December 4th, the Department of Health did issue a change in that schools that were in areas in microcluster areas of a red or orange zone were no longer required to close, but simply would have to perform the testing as will now be described. Next slide, please. So in a red zone, the requirement for testing is that a total of 30% of the in-person students, faculty, and employees must be tested over a month following the, de the, the zone designation. And this should be done in a way in which approximately uh, half uh, or 15% are tested every, you know, over a two week interval. The purpose of this testing is for the testing to be representative of the population at the school. So if you have four different buildings 30% of the population is not 30% in a, is 30% in each building. So you want to have a proportional representation. Next slide, please. In an orange zone, it is similar. The only difference is that we're talking about 20% of the in-person students, faculty and staff over one month and therefore 10% every two weeks. Next slide, please. So what would lead to closure now that red and orange don't require closure? And I think this is the way this slide is written from the Department of Health, it's, it's not, it's a little confusing. I want you to look at the third bullet first, which says 3%, nine or more cases, depending upon sample size uh, outside of New York City, which is of course where we are. So meaning that if you had less than 300 persons in person, uh, then nine positives would lead to closure, but otherwise it's 3% of the population, I believe is the correct interpretation of this. Next slide, please. And when we get to yellow zone testing, essentially nothing has changed. So yellow zone, even though it's a lower rate of positivity in the community, uh, we still are talking about 20% every two weeks from the point of, uh, of designation. And then if at that two week interval, the, the result of testing is less than the seven day positivity rate for that area, then you don't have to continue testing. But if it's uh, the same or more, then you go for another round of two week testing. Next slide, please. So what are your testing options? Well, there are many of them, but we're going to uh, really try to simplify this for you. So you could have 
people at your school get tested by their healthcare providers or go to one of the New York State tents. But the problem with that is that you have to collect all those results because you have to see all of those results. It has to be reported into your school report card. And that's a lot of work. So the easiest way to do this is for you to have your own limited service laboratory registration uh, or to work with someone who already has a registration, uh, which can be with us if you're already a designated area. And for those schools that are utilizing pool testing, uh, there, uh, you, you know, you can use the pool testing as a means to get your 20 or 30% tested. Uh, and that can simplify things as well. Next slide, please. So in the next series of slides, I'm going to pretend as though you're in a yellow zone and just take you through that a moment. So again, yellow zone is 20% over the two week interval. And really your main two options are to either file for your own limited services laboratory license or to work through us or someone else who, who you collaborate with that has a limited services laboratory license. I just want to say that don't be intimidated by getting your own laboratory license. Uh, your physician can serve as the laboratory directive, director. These are limited licenses only for the tests being performed. Um, and uh, they are easy to obtain directly from the New York State Department of Health. Next slide, please. So we're talking about a license for a point of care diagnostic test. Now these tests are different from the standard PCR molecular nasopharyngeal swab that we've been using throughout uh, this pandemic. They are more limited. Uh, they don't have the same sensitivity and specificity, but in a, when you're in a yellow, orange or red zone, we find the rapid antigen works quite well. And the beauty of it, of course, is that the result is out in 15 minutes. And this is the test that we have available. This is an extremely simple test to use. It's a nasal swab that goes into both nares. And uh, there's an excellent training video, which anyone doing the test is required to have reviewed. Uh, it's really very similar to a pregnancy test or a, uh, any of our rapid diagnostic tests using card readers. You simply take the swab and insert it in a little area on the card with diluent and uh, wait to see the reading, which is simply reading a control line in the test line. Next slide, please. So who can perform these tests? So, so because of the pandemic, on March 15th, the State Department of Health issued guidance uh, that these kinds of tests can be performed by unlicensed individuals. And I would refer you to the hyperlink and the advisory there for details on that. Next slide, please. So to obtain a limited service laboratory license, you can go to the hyperlink on this slide. It, uh, and this will take you to Wadsworth that oversees all of these licenses from the New York State Department of Health. And the application materials are there. It's a simple application. It costs $200 uh, and it's very simple to complete. Next slide, please. Okay, so what will you need if you will begin testing? So whether you're working under your own license, under our license, or someone else's, I think these 12 points summarize what you need. Number one, you need a standing order by your district physician to test for COVID-19, and you will need a consent form, and these are developed by the district. You will need a test requisition that has all the required fields that will have to be reported to the New York State Department of Health electronic laboratory reporting system. You will need test kits, that part's easy. You can get them from the State Department of Health or from us. Uh, if you're going to be setting up large areas for testing and you're going to have testing in one area but the card's read in another so that you can move people through quickly, you'll need timers. Anyone performing the test has to be N95 fit tested and, um, and uh, will be in full PPE. Anyone performing the test uh, has to be trained uh, and has to have reviewed the Abbott training video. 
Uh, again, the, the personal protective equipment for all staff are N95 respirators, eye protection gowns and gloves. There needs to be a form that will be given to the persons tested with their results that's separate from the test requisition form. Uh, and anyone who tests positive must be given a protocol for isolation so that they have that uh, at the, and are given that at the time of their test. And then you'll need to upload the results into the New York State Electronic Laboratory System and also uh, report them into your school report card. Next slide, please. So this is the test requisition, whether you use our laboratory or you use, um, whether you use our, sorry. Whether you use our laboratory or another laboratory, uh, you have to complete all the fields in this requisition. And we can give you a, one that doesn't have our name on it if you wanna set up your own limited services uh, requisition. Next slide, please. Regarding informing patients of their results, this is a sample result form that we can give out to you if you're using our lab or if you're not using our lab, we can just take our name off of it. But this is what you wanna be able to give to the patients so that they have their results. Next slide, please. And then entering the, the information from the requisition into the laboratory reporting system, I would strongly advise that you call the Eclairs help desk to learn how to do this. Uh, I'm told that they are very helpful. It's a lot of data that has to be reported for each person tested. So it's important to um, understand that process and that is done by the school. Next slide, please. So if you're operating under our license, what you will need is in, in the box on the left. You let us know about your zone designation within a letter and we'll need a copy of the standing order by your healthcare professional, as well as a list of the persons who will be testing and that your healthcare professional has signed off that they have all been trained. Uh, and then when you test, if you're working under our license, you're going to need your test requisitions to enter the data into Eclairs, but you also have to send a copy to us so that we have it because you're working under our license and we will request an Excel data summary of all tests performed by site date and results. We can give you that template. And then we can provide you with the test kits, the requisitions, the reporting form. And if you're in a zone, we can certainly try to have a public health nurse be available to answer questions to, for you to help you with the setup. Um, next slide, please. But uh, many of you are probably thinking, gee, I don't wanna wait until I'm in a zone, but I want to prepare in advance. So what I would say to you is that you should order the Binex cards now, speak with your school physician and decide whether you're going to get your own limited services lab registration. It's probably in the end a little simpler if you do it independently, but we're here to help you and you can work under us. And again, to make sure you understand the requirements for reporting testing, because that is done at the local level, even if you by the school, even if you're under our license. Next slide, please. So to order tests, you can order them directly from the New York State Department of Health. And the email is here on the slide, COVID-19 rapid test at health.newyork.gov. And there's a, a fillable PDF in this requisition. Next slide, please. And if you uh, want to get tests from us or work directly with us, uh, then uh, we have a form to complete. And Chris Steers, who works in uh, Westchester County Government and Administration, uh, is our contact person to work with you to get this process started. So I'm sure you have some questions. Uh, you know, we will set up times to meet with you and address these questions. Uh, but we thought that by at least having this available to you, you could start to think through and have some of the basic information that you need. And we'll go from there. 
Our goal is to keep the schools open under as much as we possibly can. And so, you know, we've been very pleased with the results so far in that schools that were required to test found that their numbers were lower than the community at large. That was very reassuring. We hope to be able that that will continue. Uh, so thank you very much for all that you're doing. And uh, we will find a time to address your questions as they come up. Thanks very much. Okay. Dr. Montecavo, thank you very much for this and for helping us uh, provide this additional information. As, as folks know, if they have follow-up questions, uh, want to get questions to me, you may already have Dr. Montecavo's contact information. And of course, you can always send me an email at jglazer at westchestergov.com. Thank you.